Hey everyone, welcome back to theCUBE's continuing coverage of CrowdStrike Falcon 23 live from Caesars Palace in Las Vegas. Lisa Martin here with Dave Vellante. We were covering the show yesterday. We've been talking with CrowdStrike executives, with its ecosystem, with customers. We're going to be continuing to talk about its ecosystem next. We've got Tom Parker here, the CEO and founder of Hubble Technology. Tom, welcome to theCUBE, great to have you. Hey, great to be here, thanks for inviting me. Give the audience an overview of Hubble. You were, you were a COVID baby, mission, vision, help us understand why. Yeah, absolutely. Well, first thing is, you know, I think um, the pandemic was a great opportunity to build new companies. Um, you know, there was a lot of, at the time, you know, the VC market was, was pretty good. Um, there was, uh, you know, a lot of lot of talent, you know, becoming available, and uh, it was, you know, just a great time to be heads down. You know, everyone wanted to be at home anyway, um, not going into the office, and so um, yeah, it was a really good time for us. You know, what really inspired me to build Hubble was the experiences I had as a security leader, um, both as a line of business chief information security officer, at AIG Insurance, and as chief technology officer at uh, Accenture Security. Um, I started my last business and exited that to Accenture um, and spent about six years with Accenture uh, serving some of the biggest brands in the world. Accenture Security is actually the world's largest cyber security consulting business. People don't realize that. Uh, today it's over six billion in revenue. We grew that uh, out of a, a pretty small business uh, when, we, uh, when they acquired my company. And the, I like to say, you know, the nice thing about consulting is you get to be the customer's therapist. You kind of really sit down with them and understand uh, what their big challenges are, what are the big programs, what are the big rocks they're trying to move internally. Um, and I met a lot of different technology vendors, uh, both startups, uh, early stage companies, but also late stage companies as well. And I found that you know, I was in this great position to match make between the supply uh, of, of tech companies and the demand that was coming from, from the customers that I was working with. And I found that I was getting asked again and again about visibility. Mm. How do we get visibility on our environment? We use legacy technologies like ServiceNow for CMDB and inventory, that's more of an IT thing. But as security practitioners, we need more. We need trust in the data. We need the ability to action the data. And we need context in the data. Security is very much a game of scale. And if you think about all of the busy work that is created by not having clarity around data in security operations, what is this asset, making phone calls to try and figure out what this application does, am I going to get fired if I take this system offline? Getting to a, a decision is extremely time-staking, uh, you know, it's a painstaking process and takes a lot of time if you don't have a product like Hubble. And so I just found that there was nothing in the market and uh, you know, coupled with my experience at AIG, where now it was my problem, I had operations in over 30 different countries. We had 17 what we called non-integrated businesses, which generally um, existed because of acquisitions or for regulatory purposes. Uh, and, and the thing is, with, with a big multinational company like that, you're going to have a lot of tech sprawl, you're going to have inconsistent tech environments, and at the end of the day, you're one brand. And I would talk to my teams internationally, I would say, guys, like, we get that you're different. We get that you, know, you might be doing things slightly differently. You have different regulations. The culture is different. The laws are different. But at the end of the day, you've got one brand. You've got one stock price. And if the headline of the New York Times says XYZ has been hacked, no one's going to care about reading like, the subline that says, by the way, it was a two-person office in Botswana. Um, doesn't matter, the, yeah. the headline says that you know, your yeah. company's been breached and that's what's going to cause your stock price to tank the next day. And so I decided, you know, listen, um, you know, I, I love working with, uh, you know, I love being a security leader in an organization like AIG, but I felt the need that I had to go and build a platform to solve this um, industry-wide. So, yeah. you have a 20 plus year career of being able to observe the changing threat landscape. Yeah. Um, and so you had, you had sort of the built-in market analysis, right? Oh, yeah. And then it's a matter of, okay, where, where's the problem that I can solve? What, sure. What's missing from your practitioner perspective? And then it's funding and execution. So, yeah. now you could have probably taken a lot more money in 
and yeah. you know, but you chose we not to. Done. Yeah, we right? did. Yeah, which is interesting. We did to yeah. me. Yeah. Uh, what? How? How was that decision? Because so many companies were just kind of pigging out during yeah. that time frame yeah. and are sort of now in trouble. Um, well, you, that, exactly, yeah, I mean, that, 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 that's um, an unexpected but great question. <laughs> I think um, the reality is my philosophy, I mean, this is my not, not my first startup. I think first time founders um, maybe get a little bit greedy, both on the check size and the valuation. Right. And I was very conscious about not wanting to set myself up for a down round, um, especially with the uncertainty in the economy. I mean, we did, start the company in a period of uncertainty, there was a lot of dry powder in the VCs at the time uh, to be deployed, but uh, we were very thoughtful about uh, valuation and what we actually needed. And with um, the support of our friends at CrowdStrike, uh, who I, I think we were one of their first investments out of the Falcon Fund, right. and our friends at Excel, uh, we launched the company, and it's, yeah, it's been a great journey. Yeah, good partners. Yeah. Talk about the partnership, the technology partnership with CrowdStrike. You mentioned yeah. they were one of the, you were one of the first they invested in. Yeah. What does the technology partnership look like and what's in it for customers? Yeah, so we, we have um, a really great uh, better together story, I think. Uh, if someone is using CrowdStrike already, uh, they were one of our first technology integrations. And so because of that, some of our first customers were also CrowdStrike customers. And you know, we're really able to leverage uh, the power and data of the CrowdStrike uh, Falcon platform, but also couple that with uh, all of the existing investments, other investments a customer has made in security. Um, I think, you know, I, I was a, actually a CrowdStrike customer when I was at AIG, and um, one of the things I loved was how well uh, CrowdStrike works with other technologies. Um, you know, it's not, you know, if you look at Microsoft, uh, Cisco, you know, they only very work properly if you have, you know, Microsoft in the cloud, you're using, you know, Microsoft on the endpoint, you know, uh, use their, using their SIM technology. Mm -hmm. It's, it's um, you know, very much driven to force a monoculture of technology uh, in, in order for it to work well. And so, uh, you know, a CrowdStrike customer can expect really great integrations that really do unlock the power of, you know, the, the, of the, not just Falcon, but the other technologies they've invested in as well. Um, when I, I was at Accenture, I worked with an incredible leader, Omar Abash, uh, who's now uh, a, a leader at Microsoft, and uh, he wrote a, uh, a book called Pivot to the Future, and he, he talks a lot about unlocking trap value, and one of the, the, uh, the stories he always talks about is uh, how um, the automation of telephone switching way to the internet. We already we had all this trap value in copper that we put in the ground, right? And we had operators that were having to manually connect calls, right? When you know you make a phone call, it's the operator, you know, who do you want to talk to? The internet would never have happened if we hadn't figured a way to automate that. And so that really struck home with me. And so when we when we founded Hubble, we very much were thinking about um, not being dependent on the presence of any particular technology, but also but unlocking the value of, of what the customer had already invested in, and of course CrowdStrike was, was one of those investments that we were happy to, to integrate with. So what is next-gen asset discovery, and, <laughs> and how do you think about an asset? Yeah, well I think it's next-gen because we are operating in an era of next-generation technologies as a whole. We have an IT stack that looks very, very different from what it looked like 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, it's not just a question of an asset being a device with an IP on the network. A single IP address could be hundreds of microservices. The complexity has just exploded in, 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 in compute environments. And so because of that, you need a modern approach to inventory your assets, to understand the assets, and to have a high level of assurance that you have the correct security controls such as the presence or lack thereof of, uh, of a technology like CrowdStrike Falcon. So, let's talk about assets. I mean, yeah. I don't want to get too pedantic. Some people don't think data is an asset. Let's assume it is, mm -hmm. all right? Or it can be used to create assets. How do you sort of discover, do you, do you consider data as an asset? And how do you discover yeah. data as an asset? How do you treat that? Yeah, absolutely. Well, to us, anything that creates value to the organization is an asset. 
Um, if you think it's, it's interesting, when I was first fundraising, I met with some funds that weren't really in the IT space at all. And um, when I said asset management, they thought, you know, financial <laughs> instrument asset management and, um, you know, yachts and, and you know, airplanes and, and so forth. Um, but in actual fact, it's not that different because you're trying to manage value, right? You're trying to protect the value. Um, you're trying to understand the value, trying to understand how that value might appreciate and depreciate over time. And so it's the same with Hubble. We're trying to understand, you know, the board doesn't care about cyber really, they care about risk and value protection. And you know, they have a fiduciary duty to, to, to do that. And right. so data is an asset, user identities are an asset, and we help customers map that. In terms of how we do it, is we live off the land. We integrate with technologies like CrowdStrike. In terms, in, when it comes to data, we integrate with um, some of the great technologies in the market, such as Veronis, uh, Big ID, and some of the disruptors in the space, like our new friends at Dig Security. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, we're really integrating with that with that stack to, to bring differentiated value to the customer. But Tom, doesn't an agent get me all that I need? What, what's missing and why does that need to be enriched? Yeah, so I think um, you know, there's a recognition by uh, even companies you know, that do have agents that have discovery capabilities like CrowdStrike mm -hmm. that the agent can only see what the agent can see. It is a, what we call a self-defining universe. Um, and actually, um, there, there are you know, other companies out there in the industry that are representing the fact that they have a complete inventory of the world, which actually I think is, quite, is, is a bit dangerous, right, to represent that this is your entire asset ecosystem. Um, that's certainly not something that CrowdStrike does. You know, their investment in Hubble certainly um, is a tipping of the hat to, to mm -hmm. that recognition. Um, but I think you need a holistic, you know, I, I like to think of it as like the senses, right? You have uh, you know, you're hearing, and if something goes bang behind you, you turn your head and look to see what it is, or you smell something, and you look in the direction of where the smell's coming from. You need, and if you think about those different data domains, you know, network, agent data, cloud data, user access data, um, as domains, as senses, it kind of gives you an idea of why those things are so um, intrinsically important to one another, and why you need a holistic approach to really give you that complete view of, of the asset ecosystem. Can you share you, what, you talked about founding the company back in 2020 yeah. and why. When you're in customer conversations or even partner ecosystem conversations, yeah. what is it that, that really differentiates Hubble in next-gen asset intelligence discovery? Yeah, so I, I think our, our, the first big thing is our approach to what an asset is. Um, and I think that really resonates with customers the fact that we are a true platform that people can build on top of and leverage. You know, we have a lot of Fortune 500 customers that want to do new and different and interesting things that we haven't even imagined. And one of the most, um, I think, gratifying things for me as a founder when I see someone using our product is to find that someone is using our product in a way that we, we hadn't, you know, hadn't thought of ourselves. Um, that they're being creative and innovating on top of the platform as well. And that really does help us set ourselves apart in the market. And then the third thing is a point that I made earlier, which is about um, the actionability and insights that our data provides. We're not just giving you a list of assets, we're showing you how the assets interact with each other, how they relate to each other through a knowledge graph. Um, and that really does enable uh, security professionals to understand the relevance of an asset and, and why they should care about this asset versus perhaps this one over here that maybe isn't as important and why it's not as important. So knowledge yeah. graphs, Interesting topic. Yeah. Um, security's always been so probably the best use case for data yeah. graphs and knowledge sure. graphs. And I do think eventually they're going to find their way into broader use cases. But how are you using knowledge graphs? Tell us a little bit about the tech kind of behind Hubble. Yeah, so we have a uh, multi tiered approach. You know, I would say that not every, something we learn is that not every problem is a graph problem. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you do just want flattened data in a, a, a normalized format especially when you're, um, you know, we, we integrate our data outbound as well into products like Splunk, security logging tools, uh, and of course, uh, you know, MDR platforms. Uh, we released, uh, announced a partnership at Black Hat this year with a, a, um, an MSSP that is leveraging our data. And, um, and so, you know, they generally want the data in a, in a, in a simple to digest format. 
Um, and so we, yeah, we have a, a, a multifaceted approach that both uses graph technology. We also have a uh, graph visualization, which really allow, which brings the data to life. It really does allow operators to understand and visualize how assets relate and belong in a much bigger ecosystem of data. Especially important when you're looking at things like the cloud, um, which you know is is increasingly complex, highly ephemeral, um, and you know you, you have to ask quite complex questions. But you want to find a way to ask them in a simple way. And we see a lot of opportunity in the future uh, for AI on top of our knowledge graph um, to make it even easy, easier for uh, our, your customers to ask questions about our data. And you say you, you want, sometimes you want to flatten the data because presumably it's easier to query. Right? Yeah, no, it, yeah it, for sure. There, there will come a day, I think, when, when you'll get the expressiveness of a knowledge graph with the query flexibility of SQL. That, yeah, that day is yeah, coming and that's yeah. going to make knowledge graphs explode. You've got a, 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 another, we're at Cyberland, so you got to have acronyms. Uh, I guess CASM, <laughs> Cyber yeah. Asset Attack Surface Management. Yeah, sure. What is that and why do you need it? Uh, that's, that, I wish I could answer that question for you. I think, you know, pick, pick your security acronym and yeah. uh, interview everyone here on the show floor and you'll get a different answer, I think. <laughs> um, I think for us, um, CASM is the uh, word that some of the early kind of next gen -ish players like Exonius were starting to use in the space. Um, Gartner has been very intentional not to create a magic quadrant for Chasm. Um, they, they mentioned it in their hype cycle, which is why it's become kind of part of the lexicon. Um, we feel that long term, this is actually a capability that the entire organization, the entire enterprise can benefit from, not just uh, cyber. Um, we shouldn't be selfish with our asset data. <laughs> Um, we have an increasing number of uh, CIOs that are, uh, at our customers are saying, hey, why does security have better data now than we do? Um, and so, you know, we really do want to move the needle, not just in security uh, as a cyber asset capability, mm -hmm. but as an enterprise-wide play. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. I mean, security companies are treating cyber as a data problem, and we're seeing things like <clears throat> Falcon for IT Right, we can help you with our data. That yep. makes a lot of sense, Tom, a lot of adjacencies. Last question, we have only about sure. 30 seconds left yeah, before absolutely. my producer yells in my ear. I'd love to hear a customer story, even if you yeah. want to mention it by industry or use case, that you think really shines the spotlight on those differentiators that you talked about. Yeah, absolutely. So we have a uh, really fantastic local DC company, uh, EAB, uh, that we've been working with now for a couple of years. Uh, they, you know, they're a reference for us. Um, amazing to work with. You know, they were using some other technologies that tried to compete in this space. Those technologies were more focused on solving very specific problems and they were based on agents actually, discovery uh, capabilities. And what happened, the pandemic happened, right? And all of a sudden, they had this great visibility because everyone was coming to the office and then everyone was working from home and the visibility just disappeared overnight. And, um, and so they realized they needed a product uh, that had a much more holistic approach to data discovery, um, and now they're, they're looking to us as well for cloud cluster management, and so we've been able to grow with them as their needs have evolved, and I think that's really you know, the essence of, of why a platform approach is, is so important and having that holistic approach. I'd like to have one more question. The inspiration sure. behind the name, I'm seeing a very galactic theme oh, on gosh. the website. I'll, I'll see if I can give you a quick answer. So, um, you know, we've been involved with the World Economic Forum for a long time. Uh, we're a technology pioneer. Uh, we got that award last year from the forum. Um, I was at a forum event maybe four years ago before I started the company. I was in Geneva and we were getting a tour of the particle collider um, and got a tour. They don't have tour guides, they have physicists that give you the tours. Wow. Um, it was an expert in particle physics, dark matter, dark energy, and we were talking about the fact that we know about, you know, humans know about 20% of all matter in the universe. I said, well, how do we know it's 20%? If we can't see the 80%, how do we, can, how do we measure from you know, A to B? Yeah. And it's because, of course, we can measure gravitational fields of the things that we can't see or don't necessarily understand, but we know there's something out there. And so I thought that was a really interesting metaphor for, um, for the security paradigm of measuring our assets, you know, where the, our, our IT environment begins and ends. And of course, Edwin Hubble was one of the first pioneers in that space of um, deep space exploration, yeah. discovering uh, black holes and, and so forth. And, and that was the inspiration in the name. Amazing yeah. that, that you were able to get the name. Yeah, yeah. yeah. well, yeah. <laughs> 
Awesome. Yeah, yeah. Tom, what a fascinating conversation. Yeah, thank thank you, you so much yeah, thank you. for sharing with us what Hubble is doing, how you're partnering with CrowdStrike, really the, the benefits in it for customers across every industry. We, we really appreciate your insights. Yeah, I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you. for our guests and for Dave Vellante, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE live, day two of our coverage of CrowdStrike Falcon 23. Stick around, the CTO of CrowdStrike is up next with Dave and me. We'll see you in a minute.